What were some of the top middle office challenges for your clients in 2016? So when I look back at 2016 for middle office, I think that traditionally people will refer to the challenges of low interest rate environment, you know, things around fee compression, the movement from active to passive, you know, political turmoil, you know, lots of things in that space. But for me, um, what really rose to the top in 2016 was organizations needs to digitize and transform their business. And I think that that to me uh, became one of the number one challenges organizations are looking to solve. Was there a particular development in securities operation that surprised you last year? What was surprising for me last year was that we saw a trend um, around outsourcing where organizations wanted to maintain some level of oversight and control around the outsourced service provider. So in our world we look at that as uh, what we refer to as more of a co-sourcing arrangement where even when an outsource opportunity came up, uh, people still had teams they wanted to leave behind to provide some level of responsibility and oversight around what they're asking the service provider to take on. And I think part of that is around uh, not really willing to give up the risk that they have to their own clients. And then um, you know, what that meant is that it really drove some investment for us uh, in our technology platform, both within our Eagle product suite as well as within BNY Mellon to provide tools to give uh, organizations both the um, instrumentation and transparency around what was going on in the outsourcing world. And then uh, when you got engaged with a client around resolution of issues that would come up day to day, uh, instead of getting on the phone, uh, trading voicemail, um, you know, passing spreadsheets back and forth, being able to provide a collaborative customer experience through a UI that would enable really a partnership opportunity to solve problems. And, we're seeing that both in fund accounting and middle office, and we've been investing in technology platforms to provide workflow and tools in order to do that. So we see that as a trend that will continue. What aspects of, of your background have proven useful in guiding the offerings of Eagle Investment Systems? So uh, although it may not look like it, I've actually been in this business for a little over 25 years now. So I've seen uh, a number of shifts in terms of the operating model and both the technology and the delivery of that technology uh, in our industry. So whether it was going from you know, uh, mainframes to best of breed technologies, whether it was the shift from on-premise technology into uh, an ASP model, uh, the shift from ASP into a cloud, uh, and then the, you know, the shift from cloud into managed services and into uh, you know, full outsourcing models. Each of those opportunities uh, to me provides a real opportunity for the client to look at re-engineering their workflows looking at finding ways to optimize more uh, operational efficiencies in terms of changing some, leveraging the technology that's being implemented there. And it gives us an opportunity to work with clients through those transitions to really drive more business value and more efficiencies into their business. What predictions would you give to securities operations professionals about developments in 2017 and beyond? So I think 2017 is going to be really the rise of the digital platform. And what I mean by that is that the opportunity for fintech disruption in our industry will happen uh, at a platform level. And if you look at what's happened just in every other industry in technology, whether it's the hotel industry with Airbnb, you know, the transportation industry with Uber, you look at what's happening with Amazon and firms like that, the success has been introducing a platform that people can participate in and partner with other firms to deliver a holistic end-to-end -end solution. In our industry, what's going to happen is that the ability to deliver data through APIs and provide access to fintechs of that data will enable that to happen. And our strategy as an organization, both with Eagle and BMY Mellon, is to deliver a platform to our clients where we can provide what we do best on the platform, but also partner with other financial technology firms, reg tech firms, opportunities to actually build an end-to-end -end solution collaboratively with open source technology in our industry. And what I'm seeing is that the firms that don't embrace that model, that want a closed system, that think they can solve everything end to end on their own, really will not be in business five or 10 years from now. And lastly, are, are there any particular technologies that you think are very promising? There's, there's, uh, there's so much going on in technology today. I think that there'd be uh, you know, a huge portfolio of things. If I was gonna you know, pick three that I think are gonna be most promising in the near term, uh, one would be around machine learning and artificial intelligence and how that could change the operational model of our clients. Uh, as an example, today if, if, if someone's doing uh, pricing rules, they'll write a rule based on a human interaction with how they see pricing uh, needed in their business. Being able to extend that into machine learning algorithms that not only will take what humans have seen, but also 
be able to go back 40 years and, and transgress all that data together to provide a much, much more uh, predictive analytic around what those pricing needs are. I think we're going to see a huge opportunity for that to impact our business. Uh, the second area that I see that's uh, really interesting, um, Eagle's been a data-centric organization, so we solve all our problems with, uh, you know, really from a data perspective, is that as clients digitize and they want to um, create a data strategy to support that, the way that we move data between platforms will change. And uh, a good example of that would be, instead of moving data in silos where you move pricing data, reference data, you know, entity data together, I think we're going to start seeing a real 360 degree view of how data gets moved between platforms where the data will move with um, the confidence level of the data, it'll move with the, uh, the measurements of other aspects of the data together, and the way that data is consumed uh, electronically will allow us to change operations as well. So I think getting a real 360 degree view of data, including the lineage of that data, is going to be really, really uh, the next step in how we move data between systems. And then thirdly, I'd say, uh, I'll go back to something that's been the buzzword for a long time, which is blockchain, and I think that, that gets overrated as being a disruptor, but we are seeing blockchain and the ability to use distributed ledger technology in real specific areas, specifically around risk and resiliency and failover, so that you can create uh, immutable representations of data using blockchain technology to provide backups to some of the legacy systems that have been out there for 20, 30, and 40 years that really don't have the the technology infrastructure that needs to get replaced and implementing some blockchain technology as a backup to some of these systems from a risk perspective, uh, we've adopted that internally and we're going to see more adoption of that across all of our platforms.